this time on Voice of Art. Any number of artists are going to be the ones who help kind of like save the world, basically. You gotta go meet this girl, Fabiana. She's an incredible human being that has come like a lightning force. I mean, she's a small person and she's a giant as far as I'm concerned. She's incredible. Her energy, her commitment, and her sense of purpose. Fabi's willing to, to kind of expand the possibilities in people's minds and really challenge them to think outside the box. And I think that it's sometimes it's those people that are willing to kind of push the edges of the, of the political conversation in our country that are really going to end up helping shape of the course that we travel. I'm Fabiana Rodriguez. I'm an artist, an activist, a printmaker, a teacher, and a public speaker. Art has the power to shape thoughts and change hearts. Art also has the ability to shape our laws, to change society, and to speak truth to power. I was born in Oakland, California to immigrant parents who strive to make a better life for our family. They came like so many do, seeking opportunity and a better life. And they were fortunate to have arrived in the 70s, a time during which migration was much more acceptable. But sadly, the last two decades have seen a steady rise in anti-immigrant rhetoric. State and local lawmakers are taking steps on their own to crack down on illegal immigration. You have a country here that's being overrun. We have a recession going on in this country, an illegal immigration problem that's run amok. They shouldn't be here to begin with. They're going back to Mexico, you He's fucking cowards. They need to deport all their Mexicans and they should be eradicated. Back in 2001, television personalities like Lou Dobbs began to fan the flames of anti-immigrant hate. The facts clearly showing in my judgment that illegal immigration is squeezing this nation's middle class, that it is not beneficial. New information tonight about the tremendous financial cost of our illegal alien crisis. We cannot reform immigration law if we can't control immigration. Lou Dobbs was somebody that every night was going on television and frequently portraying immigrants in a very negative light and that was resulting in a rise in hate crimes against Latinos in the United States. And so in 2009 I helped start Presente.org and one of our early campaigns included taking anti-immigrant commentator, CNN commentator Lou Dobbs off the air. Wow. I mean, what are you saying about me? Are you calling me a racist? Are you calling me a liar? What are you doing there? So Presente, working with a range of immigrants' rights groups all across the country, was able to you know, design a very compelling campaign through the use of art um, and online organizing tools to really mobilize hundreds of thousands of people online to push for his ouster at CNN. This will be my last broadcast here on CNN. Sadly, even with the removal of Dobbs, the hate has only seemed to escalate in the last few years. In the face of these attacks, the migrant community is strongly mobilizing and making their voices heard. Some important artistic voices in this movement are visual artists like Ernesto Llerena, Melanie Cervantes, Jesus Barraza, and Cesar Maxi, as well as Rage Against the Machines, Zach de la Rocha. Over the past few years, undocumented young people in particular have been coming out with their status and saying, I'm undocumented and I'm not afraid to say it. And that's created a huge wave of energy everywhere where people are coming out and just saying their stories and no longer being afraid to share their status. As somebody who was born in this country, I think it's tremendously inspiring. And I think that we have to support when people take courageous steps like that, we have to stand alongside of them. Today, there are extreme and inhumane laws being passed in states around the country. Laws such as SB 1070 in Arizona, HB 56 in Alabama, and HB 87 in Georgia. Under Alabama's new immigration law, beginning today, police can question and detain suspected illegal immigrants and hold them without bond. So the game that's played in the media is that we blame people just like us 
We blame people who are trying to get ahead just like us. Migrants are the ones constantly blamed for stealing jobs. But the fact is that corporations are the ones taking jobs overseas. And you know, they only do that so that they can make larger profits by exploiting workers in other countries. When it comes to immigration, I feel that we're stuck in the same paragraph and we're having the same conversations and we're not really asking the harder questions. Why are people moving? And what does the United States have to do with people moving here? What are economic agreements like NAFTA, right? U.S. foreign policy, wars that the United States has started. Like, what does it have to do with people moving? But we're not owning up to our own history, and that's why it's biting us in the ass. So what NAFTA allowed was free reign for corporations to go to places, to countries where there was lower wages, therefore gutting jobs here from the United States, going to places where they could suppress wages and people would get paid drastically less, and at the same time do massive land grabs from lands that were previously owned by families or by communals or even by the state themselves. When people lose their land, what happens? They have to go to where the jobs are. The low paying jobs are in Mexico. Where are the other jobs at? They're in the United States. And so naturally people are gonna wanna go where they can find work. That is one of the only ways that they're gonna survive. Immigrants have become a scapegoat for things that are wrong with this country. When Americans think to themselves, where are all my jobs? They look at their fellow human being and say, you took my job. And rather than looking at other workers or at other migrants or at other people, we need to be looking at who at the top is making extreme profits off cuts to us as workers, off cuts to our public services, that is where we really need to be pointing the energy. Corporate America is to blame. There is bankers, there's irresponsible politicians, there are people who have taken away our social services and have created a crisis where we are eliminating the working class, we're eliminating the middle class, and we're creating a situation where the haves and the have-nots are facing unprecedented gaps. That is not to blame because of immigrants, that's to blame because of how decisions have been made in this country since the 80s. Our country is not broke. The problem is the extreme concentration of wealth among the 1%. Immigrants aren't to blame, greed is to blame. This is precisely why we need to take immigration out of the ghettos in our minds. My name is Jose Antonio Vargas. I'm a journalist and a filmmaker. I've written for the San Francisco Chronicle, the Washington Post, Stopping the Post, the New Yorker, Rolling Stone, the New York Times, Time Magazine. Immigration is not this out of the border, Mexican, brown thing. And I think we have to explain and kind of unpack not only why people are moving, but also to explain the history behind that. People have been moving since the beginning of time. Why does Asia look the way that it does? Why does Africa look the way that it does? You know, why does somebody like me who looks like Yao Ming has a name like Jose Antonio Vargas? I don't know, because the Spanish people moved in 1521 and decided to go to the Philippines and check us out. Not my fault. White people have been moving since the beginning of time, you know? The pilgrims sailed the sea to find a place to call their own. In their ship make flower, they hope to find a better home. They finally knocked on Plymouth Rock, and someone said we're there. It may not look like home, but at this point I don't care. So I think it's important to kind of connect these dots. And again, get immigration out of the ghetto. It's not what you think it is, man. You know, what border are you talking about? The Great Wall of China? Has humanity ever built a border that could withstand human will? So long as people are hungry, dude, they'll fucking cross whatever border you put in front of them. In thinking about how to talk about migration, one of the most commonly used images to represent the free-flowing movement has been the monarch butterfly. The monarch butterfly has patterns of migration that go from Mexico through the United States to Canada and back. And it really symbolizes the natural way in which living creatures move and migrate in cycles. They go 
in certain seasons and they return in others. Very similar to what workers do. They go when the harvest and they come back when it's not. I've been hugely inspired by the butterfly symbol as have many other artists. And now one of the projects that I'm working on is to get folks from all around the country to post an image of a butterfly on their social media networks. And if you can't find of an image of a butterfly, you can very simply just put your hands together and create your own butterfly and show how you stand with undocumented migrants as they're coming out, show that you stand for humane immigration policy. Along with the butterfly symbol, we will also be creating butterfly wings and butterfly banners and taking them to Charlotte, North Carolina to the Democratic National Convention. And we will be using this art to help amplify the migrant struggle for basic human rights. Two other artists are helping me with the campaign. Ori Original and Julio Salgado. Ori is a fellow artist and my right-hand man. Julio is a talented, undocumented, and queer artist, as well as an undocubus writer. I'm gonna be heading to Arizona in a few days because Arizona represents the ultimate failure of immigration policy. When we're talking about hate, Arizona is the face of that. It is the laboratory of hate. It is where you have had some of the most anti-immigrant laws. And it is where artists like myself need to be at. If we want to inspire people, Arizona is where we have to go. Next time on Voice of Art. Before we head to the Democratic National Convention in Charlotte, we're going to make a visit to the front lines of the migration crisis in our country, Arizona, where we will meet with local activists, tour the medical examiner's office, witness deportation sentencing, and participate in a cultural festival.